Have you ever found yourself in a situation where you were so emotional hyped where you said something you didn't mean? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm talking your emotion yeah. hijacked your logic. Yeah. Your logic had no chance because your emotion hijacked. And most of the time, your emotion is hijacked based on something that has happened somewhere in the past. Okay. That's some trigger yeah. that has been pulled that's caused you to pull into that emotional car and you just going 100 miles an hour down the freeway Reckless. about to have a wreck with anybody who gets Hello it. and welcome to another amazing episode of TMC where we are here to help you take your relationships from, from surviving, surviving to thriving. thriving. If this is your first time joining us, don't forget to subscribe. Hit that like button. Hit the notification bell so you won't miss any of these amazing episodes. Today on TMC, we are having a very candid conversation about emotional attractiveness. It's because I feel something, but you can't feel what I feel. Right. And I feel something else. I mean, we all feel something, yeah. but nobody connected what we feel. So it's like, I think and having, it's what they having empathy for the other person's feelings. Cause I think, you know, as your emotional intelligence is heightened, your empathy, of course, mm -hmm. is heightened. Absolutely. So you're yeah. not only in tune with your feelings, but you're in tune with the other person's feelings. So you have empathy and it goes to certain things like this is of high value or of importance to them. Yeah. So even though it may not have that same value or that same level of intensity for you you have the empathy to understand that it does that for your partner or for the other person so you're empathetic to that and you're like okay i can see that because that's it's important to them and it's not just all about me 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 you know it's so powerful that you say that because when we talk about relationships and you hear relationships that are on the fritz and say, I didn't know she was unhappy. Yes. yes. That is because. You're not connected. Yes. And I remember we interviewed someone and she said that she said that her ex-husband told her, I did not know that you felt like this. Yeah. I mean, you're in divorce court. You're mm. separated, living in different homes. And the husband is like, this came out of nowhere. Yeah. And she's like, I've been saying it for years, but you've, you've been saying it, but the person hasn't necessarily been computing it yeah. the mm -hmm. way that you're saying it, because that level of empathy for what you're saying is not there. Because that, that, that it's, it's a twofold thing. Like someone, and, they, and it's fair to say if someone say, you know what, man, I mean, they, I'm not a mind reader, you know, yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I don't true. read any minds, you know, you know, they, 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 they should have said something, but in our case, I didn't allow that exactly. to happen. Yeah, when I seen true. something was wrong, I dug at it because of the emotional level of the most uh, attachment. If I seen something with her, I connected to it already. Mm. And so since I'm emotionally connected, I can't let it go because I, I don't know what you feel, but I feel that something is off. So, you know, took pulling teeth and everything else to get the answer. But I mean, I got the answer and it helped the relationship. And that's what, that's the power of when we talk about emotional intelligence and in relationships mm -hmm. is that it allows you to be aware of the other persons, it, but it also allows you to express. But what you just said is key, and that's the saving power of emotional intelligence and relationships. It makes you aware of changes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, aware of changes. Sure. Like you said, that then you you wouldn't let it yeah, go. Because you know that something that's has it. changed that's in that it. person. Something is not where it was or something is off. Yeah. Hindsight is what? 2020. And I think I've had higher emotional intelligence after the, my last relationship mm -hmm. because I can go back and say I lacked a level of emotional intelligence because I was not aware of the small changes that person was experiencing. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I think I saw it, but didn't know how to process it yeah. and then to express it back. And mm -hmm. I think I expressed it, but that was a disconnect somewhere. Yeah. And so even in dating, mm -hmm the power of emotional intelligence. Oh yeah. I love it. I love it. And here's the thing, EQ, emotional intelligence and IQ are both important, but sometimes, and this is all about logic and emotion. We can oftentimes be more logical mm -hmm. in the mm -hmm. situation and not emotional. Yeah. And then sometimes we can be so emotional and not logical. This is twofold because there's times when we get into relationships on the emotional level, level. All together. So your emotions is at a 90, oh, 90 and 90. your intelligence is at a 10. Yeah. 
I mean, the flag wasn't, it wasn't no red flag. I mean, mm. that flag was crispy Blinking. burnt. Yeah. I mean, the fire department was waiting to put it out and you jump into the relationship based on that emotion. So yeah. it, it being all emotion is bad. Being all logical is bad. So we have to find that balance between oh, our really? emotion yeah. and our logic. I mean, in my opinion, I think 50-50 is that good place to be, you know, with the emotion and the logic. But I mean, I, I think... If someone is 90% logic, 10% emotion, I think that's a problem. Yeah. Why and you need to describe that, that used to be me. Stop describing me on yeah. camera. I mean, I'm but, serious. Right. Like, I mean, but think and then go, but go back and think about the relationship <laughs> and you can see how you know what said you're absolutely right yeah. what you're saying. You know, but these things are very important in our relationships and having a relationship because sometimes even in friendships. Sometimes we have friendships that we know we're not supposed to be in. Mm -hmm. We hate those friendships, but we're still in it because a part of us don't want to be alone. It's like that emotion aspect of us. It's causing us to make foolish decisions. Finance. People make mm -hmm. financial decisions, buy stuff they can't afford yeah. because of emotions, mm -hmm. because says, I, I got to look good on the gram and all these different things. I, this is excellent because... Because one of the things is that you can, your conversations, when it comes to conflict, I would always lead off with, I think. Yeah. And when somebody would approach me and say, I feel, I'm like, like what? What that got to do with yeah. anything <laughs> like yeah. right now? Yeah. We talking about thinking, yeah. but you could, or I've also experienced people who everything was, I, but I feel, I but feel, I feel, yeah. I feel. But one of the things that I've learned in the healing process that I've been on and grown through is that I recognize that my logic and my will were the dominant factors in my life. Yeah. And so for me to be a balanced person and make more sound decisions, I had to invite my emotions, my intellect, and my motivations, my will to the table and let my emotions have an input, yes. not to lead the decision, lead. but mm -hmm. have an input yes. and influence. Yes. Yeah. I need all three of them to yeah. influence it so I can make a better sound and balanced decision. And I've seen a shift in relationships. I've seen a shift prof professionally, yeah. personally, and that it's not all I become a better educator because it's not all well on page 10, this and this, because that's how I used to be. Uh, like it said this, and uh, this is what you need to do. But it's like, I can feel that empathy part. And it's yeah. power. It's, I don't want to say the game changer, but it feels like it has been a shift yeah. in my life. Yeah. I definitely can see the advantage, the benefits of what we're talking about. Your emotional intelligence being heightened is very important to various relationships and I see that importance like I mean we're just talking it out now and when you're talking it out just to see things play and seeing that someone has the ability to look at something you you talked about as an educator and I just thought about how beneficial that could be because when you're looking at a student you know that what's on page 10 is on page 10 but you are also cognizant that the student has this this that and the third going on behind the scene yeah. and you you know, that's so you're factoring that in. And it's the same thing in a relationship. You know, when you know, Cedric has always said that towards me is like, I always know he, he told me some of this I thing you do. I always know when I have to deal with you a certain way because this I thing you do. And to me, I'm thinking that's his emotional intelligence. Like, okay. She, Able to see it. Yeah, she on 35. So <laughs> let me come under here. And, and and it's just just to see the benefit of that. So I think I definitely would encourage everybody if we can find some resources to be able to share with them. Here, here's another thing I just want to add to that because you mentioned the I thing. So when, yeah. it, when you go into that logic and emotional aspect, I realize and I know I don't let my emotions get out of whack yeah. because I see her emotions on 10. Yes. What I do, my logic pitch up and uh -huh. I don't take anything personal, mm -hmm. And but I make a logical decision and I say, you know what? This is not a good time to have a conversation yeah. about this. So what I do, I remove myself from the situation, remove yeah. myself from the battlefield, yeah. you know, so because it takes two to war. It yeah. takes two to war. She can't war by herself, but uh -uh. she's going to look like a nut, you know, so it takes, I mean, I'm just being real. It takes, it takes two. So I'm back out of the situation because there's a point where emotions and logic, mm -hmm. that's why it's, it's a constant balance, but your logic have to make sense at a certain point too. Yeah. Have you ever found yourself in a situation where you were so emotional heightened 
where you said something you didn't mean. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. I'm talking your emotion yeah. hijacked your logic. Yeah. Your logic had no chance because your emotion hijacked. And most of the time, your, your emotion is hijacked based on something that has happened somewhere in the past. Okay. That's some trigger yep. that has been pulled that's caused you to pull into that emotional car and you just going 100 miles an hour down the freeway Frankly. about to have a wreck with anybody who gets in your way. Mm -hmm. And this happens with the emotion, with the logical. And, and this is what I've learned from, from reading and studying on, uh, on emotional intelligence. Most people that has low EQs, low emotional intelligence, and they think more logical, the person that uh, you said something, because when somebody high with the emotions, and I want you to listen to this language, when they say, I feel, I feel, I feel, they're emotional. But when they say, I, I, think, I, I, think, I think, I think, when they say, I think, I think, I think, they are more logical. This is something that I want you to look at. Most people that is heightened with logical thinking is most of the time, not all the time, but a high percentage of the time, most of these people come from a background, had trauma somewhere in their lives, somewhere in their childhood. In order for them to move forward from that, they had to shut down their emotions, mm -hmm. had to shut down the emotions. In order for me to live in this reality, yeah. live in this world, yeah. I got to think logical now. I can't think with my emotions. Uh, so that's why so many relationships, when you have so much trauma, you know, the husband had trauma or the wife had trauma. And in the relationship, there's like total yeah. chaos because the emotion is cut off and now we can't have a relationship because the relationship takes both. And that's why you have so many people so logical. They're so difficult. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Most logical people are difficult Ouch. because they don't have any emotions to relate to. Here's the thing. We all have to go back. We all have to go back and get that help. We have to go that put back to that place where that trauma happened because we don't want to live life like that. We can't raise our kids properly like that. We can't have a relationship like that. Mm -hmm. It just, it, it doesn't work. So listen, yeah. this is a new year. Listen, new year, new mind. We always talk about new mindset, but I don't think we really dig into what mindset really is. Mindset, let, let me explain something to you. So you have your spinal cord, right? So you have your spinal cord and you have the brain and I'm gonna have a display for you. Uh, it should be showing up right on the screen right now so so what happened the feelings or whatever everything works through your spinal cord so it comes up through your spinal cord and the first place it goes into this emotional area so it hits the emotional before it hits the the, the logic is is at the front of the brain and it goes in so what happened oftentimes the emotions is hijacked and it never gets to the logic and that goes back to why sometimes we, we, we say things and then we go back once we cool off. We like, what in the world was I thinking? What in the world? Who in the heck, Cedric, what in the world was you thinking? And you look yourself in the mirror like, man, what in the world? I made this decision. I made this dumb decision that I realized how crazy it was because it was so heightened and never got a chance to hit that, hit that logical aspect of your mind. Cedric, you have said yes. some gems and it is like wow but we cannot skate past what you just said about the trauma from childhood yeah. because what happened is like and I can be transparent that came out in a conversation and I don't know if it was a conversation with a friend or in a counseling session but it, the person told me they said you are using survival skills that you use in your childhood but it's Absolutely. not it's wreaking havoc yeah. in your adulthood yeah. you wow. cannot use that same skills yeah. that you used to survive last season yeah. And yeah. whether last season was in your 20s your yeah. 30s as an adult or your childhood you can't use those same survival skills <laughs> when you're trying to rise Yes. And I was like, wow, that is so true because it was emotionally unsafe for me to feel, yeah. you know, and we've talked about that culturally, you know, how a lot of times when you, you would get a whooping, they'd be like, you better smile or something like that. You know, there was some emotionally unsafe places. And so that was okay. So you shut down your emotions, but you need your emotions to function. Yeah. yeah. To function. Of... And this is the paradox of people. And I can say that as somebody who say I was very analytical and I was very logical, but we're very emotional. It's just they're just buried yes. that they're they're still there and they're very strong yeah. mm -hmm. and it's like when you start growing you start healing from the trauma you are intentional about that you allow your emotions to come yeah. and it's because there's a fear there usually the fear is that i don't want to be so emotional because you know we have people who are labeled oh they so emotional yeah and so mm -hmm. as a logical person you say i don't want to be emotional it's like yeah. mm -mm, i don't want that because they seem out of control, out of control. Yeah. but that's not 
when you really have, like you say, high emotional intelligence, it's not being out of control. There's a control to it. You're able to accept them. You're able to express them and you're able to then acknowledge them in other people and identify them in other people. So emotions doesn't have to have this bad label. Yeah. Yeah. Th that's the thing, because what Jamila, what you're talking about when I hear you saying that, it's like you said something that was very, very crucial. You said high emotional intelligence, which means that it's high up there. It's not out of whack and not out of control. So you have self-awareness, but you also have self-regulation yes. to know, like you said, the emotions have to be added to the decision making, yeah. but not drive or be the end of again. I like, this is what my feelings say. This is what it is without adding that logic to it. Because from what we're talking about today and listening to both of you all and meshing it together, too much of either or can can be detrimental to Absolutely. you. You you heightenly you over heightenly in, um emotionally where everything is your emotions and what you feel is like past 10 and then the other thing is to be so logical that there is none and they don't work together so i think you know, the ideal here would be for them to work in harmony with each other yeah. that you need you got to have both have of them both. working have both of them working when decisions are being made yes. have both of them working when you're vetting someone have both of them yes. working when you are paying attention to a situation or when you're responding to some even when you're sharing your feelings and your emotions have both of them working yeah. yeah i think that's a very important yeah it, it happens in every facet of what we do i mean you think about you know advertisement when somebody's trying to sell you something uh, they're using 30 percent logic and they're using 70 percent emotion because emotion is what gets us moving yeah that's what you're not gonna that. buy anything strictly off of logic mm. if you look at a commercial the commercial, the Ford commercial don't tell you nothing about the specs. Nope. They show it shining and you're yes. going down the sunset yep. and you're driving, driving and, it, beach, you know, yeah. family, everybody's smiling and looking <laughs> the kids in the back seat. It's you know, it's feeling to our emotions. It, it's, it's, yeah, exactly. But that's how you end up with buyer's remorse. Absolutely. Yeah. You made an emotional purchase. That's the thing. And what the two of you are saying are exactly correct. And I love the way when you said buyer's remorse, because I started to think about that's how we get relationship remorse Ooh. as well. That's how you get relationship remorse because Absolutely. you go in on 10 like, oh, girl, he did see that. He, he bought me flowers. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh, boy, she did, she did, she cooked, she how she. And you, the emotional part of you have taken over and and there is, again, there is no harmony working there. And that's why I think the most important part of uh, this conversation is they have to work together. Yes. You want to get yourself to the point where you are working both of them together, that your logic is there. It's not like you, you know, because most of the times uh, when Cedric would tell me you're doing the I thing, that's because the logic has been told to sit down. Mm -hmm. And the emotions are driving the car. And you don't want to do that either way, especially in relationships, yeah. because buyer's remorse, okay, I can trade the car in six months. I can sell it to somebody else. But once you start building a life and investing time in the relationship, and you if you get married and have kids and all of these things, you don't want to have relationship remorse all the way in there. Because, Some people do. Yeah. Some people but it do, don't but, just impact them. But now it's affecting, yes. now, it's, now we're talking about a whole yeah. other now you have string a, of kids things. from it can get real bad yeah, yeah and it can and it can so i just keep it's like the more we talk about it i definitely feel like you know it's something that we should be in tune to it's something that you want to work on growing because mm -hmm. you can grow your you can increase your emotional intelligence and so it's something that you want to be cognizant of and you want to work on growing it but you also want to have that balance that mm -hmm. you are also enacting your logic to be able to say okay this is how i feel but now the question is why do i feel this way yeah. or what's driving this feeling is this feeling something that's being perpetuated by what is actually going on or is this connecting to some hurt some trauma or something in the past to be able to differentiate the difference and see uh, there's a book that's appearing before the screen right now uh, called emotional intelligent 2.0 it's a really great book a book i've read and if you're not a reader you can look at you can find it on audible and you know you can look it up. I mean, a, a library, audio, or whatever. But I think this is worth investing in something to really understand emotional intelligence. And one of the things it says in the book, it talked about being self-aware, self-aware strategies. And I have a couple that I want to kind of give you to kind of write down and ponder on 
I have a list of 15, but I, you know, we're not going to go over all that, but I want to talk about one of the things, observing the ripple effect of your emotions, Mm -hmm. a body of water, and you drop a rock in the water, it's going to create ripples. And that ripple goes for miles and miles. And you have to understand in the relationships or in the different relationships in your life, you know, what type of ripple effects are you causing? Because Mm -hmm. your emotions is affecting a lot of more people than just you, right? My wonderful relationship coach taught me the power of the pause. Oh, yeah. And so when you're using that pause before you have this emotional re- explosion, because mm-hmm. I wasn't having reactions, I was oh, having yeah. emotional explosions. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so that's one of the things you can think about. If I respond this way, who will be mm-hmm. <laughs> impacted? And the thing about words, once they are released from your mouth, you can't take them back. Mm-mm. And a lot of times the damage is done. Now you can go and try to rebuild and repair, but that damage is done. But if we can be more proactive instead of reactive and think who is impacted by my reaction or what will be the impact of my reaction, that's powerful. So I'm going to drop down to a number five, number five and say, know who and what pushes your buttons. Mm. This is very important to know what and who who pushes your buttons, (laughs) because I'm going to tell you a little little trick I do, right? Sometimes if I'm dealing with a crucial situation, crucial conflict or whatever within leadership or whatever, always, I I love chess, right? So I I, I play different scenarios in my mind. Mm. And so what I'm doing, I'm preparing myself In my mind, I kind of play different scenarios. Okay, well, if this, you know, if it goes like this, 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 this. And it helps me to really kind of maneuver through different situations like the plan A, plan B, plan C. Mm -hmm. It protects me in relationships. You know, it's very seldom that I go into a relationship and I I lose my cool because of something that happened because it's like I've been there before. Mm -hmm. It's like I'm there before I get there. So knowing what push your buttons, knowing it, and then adapting to whether you when your buttons are pushed, what does it do to you? Yeah. We know if you hit the remote on your on your uh to watch the TV, you push that power button. We all know what the power button is gonna do. Mm-hmm. We all know what the volume button is gonna do. We know what the mute button is gonna do. What push your buttons? Yeah, that's powerful. And I can even when you were talking about that of knowing how you respond and react. I, professionally, I had a supervisor one time and she had a habit of yelling at her employees. Mm-hmm. I was exempt because she learned very early on in our relationship that when she began to raise her tone, which I learned was a trigger for me, when people yell at me, it mm-hmm. triggers me. And so what I would do, we would be in our yeah. one-on-one meetings, disengage body-wise. I would sit back and I would not engage from the conversation until she brought her tone down and she would quickly adjust like, oh, Jamila's not engaged anymore. I can't, I can't scream at her. Yeah. And so- I never had a problem with her screaming at me because that was a trigger for me. And I had to disengage. Like you say, you have to already know. And so if you know that doing X, Y, Z, like another thing, cussing, if somebody cusses at Mm -hmm. me, not curse, but cuss at me, that's a trigger. So you have to know, like you say, you already have to know how am I going to respond to that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the best thing for me is, in certain situations, I'm not going to engage. Yeah. That's it. Disengage. Cause it's like, that's not a safe place. Yeah. That's not a safe space. Mm-hmm. Even Cedric talking about the scenarios, he's oftentimes shared that with me. Like, you know, if you're getting ready to have a conversation with somebody, do you know what it's about? No, I don't know what it's about. What well, have you thought about what it could be? And I do that. You think about what it could be about. You think about what, how it could go, what they could say and how you could respond. Because even though it may seem like you just talking about it, it seemed like overkill, but it stops you from doing something that you will regret. Yeah. Yes. And even that, having that as the thing, like, okay, oh, I'm going to disengage. That That's your that's your power right there to mm-hmm. pause. Even, you know, okay, this ain't, he said that earlier about the I think. This is not going anywhere. Mm-hmm. Let me remove myself from the conversation, remove myself from the situation. So even the disengaging is you making a decision to say, okay, we're going to stop this right here. Yeah, yeah, that is so true. I mean, so you can see the power oh, absolutely. of mm-hmm. these strategies and just yeah. emotional intelligence, you know, yeah. even, and we've talked about professional, we've talked about personal, personal. parental. They work, they work romantic. all the way around. Yes, because these work. are all relationships. Exactly. Like, 
life is built on relationships. relationships. Yep. Yep. And that right. draws back to me to connect to what you said about people experiencing trauma mm-hmm. and thus shutting down their emotions. Because even something, even things like that, you may think that those things are small. Like, oh, I just need a minute. I need a break or whatever. But if that continues Shut to happen down. to that child, then that part of them being excited about whatever yeah. they're doing, you're telling them don't be that. Because that's what they're a kid. So they don't understand yeah. that you know, mom's had a bad day. Give her a minute. They don't know. They know you saying, be quiet, sit down, blah, blah, blah. So, you know, it's like, shut that off. No, the famous one, shut up. Yeah. yeah. Shut up. And then when they shut up and then when they're teenagers and they, they not talking, now you're like, oh, you, you know, you yeah, feel bad because they're not talking to you. You told them to shut up right. when they were five. I mean, come on, you know, so yeah. we have to really, you know, I'm not knocking nothing, it. but it's just, this is real stuff. We, 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 we'll have real talk today. So this, this is real stuff. We have to really, really, really be careful. Another thing, I'm going down to 11. It says, visit your values. Visit mm-hmm. your values. Know your values. We did our values, the yeah. five top five values, and we did not do it together. We did it separate. We were not looking at each other, not, you know, what you got, what you got. And the top three values for us the were same. exactly the wow. same. Uh, talk about the top five. Top five, yeah. absolutely. Five. On a list of probably 40 values. Yes, yeah. and the, the the thing that I kept, that I keep thinking about is when we were talking about that, I said, I said, babe, it's 24 years in, right? I said, babe, this is why our relationship <laughs> worked. Yeah. Like we could never- That was like, a discovery be- for us. Like, I mean, really. Before we could never put we it in fake sense. Yeah. So when you know what you value and you know what the person that you're dating Absolutely. or the person you plan to marry value, you know, I'm, and I'm not, and this has to be, you know, we have to be honest. We have to take these assessments separately and then come together. So you're not trying to say you value it. I value and the truth of the matter is you're gonna see what they value because yeah. he don't have he doesn't really have Absolutely. to tell me like on paper that it makes sense when I see it on paper but I already know that about him because I know that those things are important to him that loyalty honesty yeah. if you when he asked me when we start talking I'm feel we you circling all these different values then you have to choose your top five we're not even looking at the same but that's why we work the way we work and so that's important in relationship. Think about the things that you value and what the other person values. We have definitely shared some tips here today. The two things that we talked about today that are very, very much a part of your emotional intelligence is self-awareness and self-regulation. Self-awareness and self-regulation. You're aware of self and you're also regulating self, regulating how you show up for yourself as well as how you show up for others. Yeah, definitely important. This podcast, emotional attractiveness. This is something that we can improve. This is something that we can enhance. This is something that you can do as an individual. You know, we deal with those situations, deal with those traumas and those things that happens in our life, and what happened in our past don't have to affect our future. It all depends on what we do right now today. So my question for you is what will you do this point forward? So thank you for joining us for this powerful conversation. We hope that you like, share, and subscribe to get the word out. So we want to thank you for joining us today on TMC. Looking forward to hanging out with you again on next week as we continue to help you take your relationship from from surviving surviving to thriving. Bye. Bye. See See you next week. week.